spots in Sheffield. I'm not going to tell you exactly where it is. If you can pick it up by the by the staircase and the rock formation, good luck on you. And if you do pick it up, please do this with care. This is one of my spots that I often come to catch crayfish. I dived here a few days ago. There were loads of crayfish here. Unfortunately, with the tide and the sea is like it is now, you can't get in here without getting hurt. So I'm going to show you guys another way of catching crayfish. And uh, you can use it, lose it, whatever. And once I've got a crayfish or two, I'm going to go home and make a delicious meal. But once again, please, you have to have a, cra a crayfish permit. You only allowed to keep eight crayfish. And if you do recognize the spot, keep it to yourself. Um, use it with pleasure, but don't go over the limits. And uh, I like to just catch one or two because the whole eight is a lot to eat in one day and I don't like freezing crayfish. But anyway, let's get going. All right, so I'm just gonna use normal tackle. This is my medium tackle. And basically, it's just a rod and a reel. I've got some braid on here. Okay, what I'm going to use is what we call a crayfish jig. Goodness me, it looks like a Sputnik, it's a sinker. With a whole bunch of hooks attached, apart from diving crayfish. This is the only legal way of catching them, other legal way. You can dive them as long as you're not using an air bottle, or you can catch them from the shore using that kind of uh, apparatus there. Bait goes in there, the crayfish comes, eats the bait, and one of these hooks will catch one of his legs. You'll feel the movement on the rod, and then you'll just lift it gently and one of these hooks will get him in the leg or in the chest or, or somewhere and then you'll land, you'll, you'll land yourself a crayfish. Absolute delicious East Coast rock lobster. So let's put that on. Got to watch out for all the hooks. And here we just use our figure eights. Because it's braid I use seven turns. There's nothing fancy about this. No presentation. Just be careful of all the hooks. And that's it. Don't have to trim off the ends, nothing. Okay, and then we're just going to use some... Uh, I, I just keep a lot of cut, off cuts in my bait, old bait. And I'll attach it here with bait cotton. Drop that in the gully over here. I'll show you the gully. And um, we'll catch ourselves with crayfish, hopefully. Sometimes you can sit here for hours and get nothing. Sometimes you drop it in the water and in five seconds you've got a crayfish. I'm hoping it's the five second rule today. Alright, so we're going to use some old mackerel. And yeah, I'm just going to cut a couple of slices. Like I said, nothing fancy. You just want fleshy, and I prefer old. Right? This isn't that old, but it's off cuts from when I go fishing. All right, now I'm just going to go toss this in the sea, in my little gutter here. Okay, so as you can see, I just love that in this gutter here. It's quite a deep gutter. Open sea over there, a little ledge in front of me, open gap. And the crayfish tends to come right in here. I've lobbed this right up against the rocks. And I'm just going to stand here and wait. Sometimes you'll feel them getting on there. It'll feel like a small fish bite. And uh, the, you don't strike. You basically just firmly lift the rod. And then hopefully you get it on. Right now there's a lot of foam, a lot of working water, there's a strong west wind blowing. So uh, I'm fishing for them. Oh, oh, oh! Something's eating the bay. You've got to be patient. Almost, you've got to almost feel them moving off with it, just like slowly moving and then you can lift. If you'll just get fish, that'll come and pick them. Here we go, I've got him off the bottom. Got him right off the bottom. Now I've got to lift him very, very, very gently. There he is, kicking and carrying on. You see how the rod's vibrating? Oh, I don't want to drop him. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to hold his tail tighter. Otherwise he kicks and jumps and carries on. Hey, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down. There we go, you can see those hooks got him all over. Just unhook him and get him in our box. There we go. You can see how he was nibbling on that bait. Look, it's almost all gone there. Beautiful East Coast Rogue Lobster. 
handling these things with gloves, and this thing's got me all over as it's been kicking. I'm gonna cut my finger, but uh, he's calmed down a lot, and he's going home for dinner. They've gotta be 650 mils across the top, and that one definitely makes it. Okay, time to go put some more baits on. Let's try and get another one. Like I said, there's no, uh, no finesse on this. These steep walls, these steep walls are over here, they, they, it's all undercut, and that's where the crayfish go. So that one I've got over here, I'm just going to move on a bit, to put one against the wall over here. There you go. There you go, this west wind is now picked up. It's blowing quite strong and it uh, looks like we're going to have about to have some rain. But uh, I managed to get one crayfish. I actually have uh, two crayfish at home from a dive the other day. So uh, I've got three to prepare. I had a dive before the sea got big. Managed to get two decent sized crayfish. And plus that one we got today on the, on the crayfish jig. We're going to go home and make a lovely dinner. And like I said, you're allowed to keep eight crayfish, no good keeping eight, unless you've got a family to feed. But because uh, it's quite a rich meat, so I'd rather release them. The East Coast rock lobster is under pressure, and that's why there are limits and open at close season. Um, November it closes on the 1st of November, and then on the 1st of March it opens again. When you catch them, you've got to look out for berry on their bellies. You get them full of berry. If it's full of berry, you've got to release it. If it's soft skin, Nothing says you have to release it, but I do personally release them because they are vulnerable at that time. That's when they've shed their skin. Um, so you release them then. And if they, like I said, if they've got berry, those are the breeders with the berry. Those are all baby crayfish that are going to be born. They get quite large. They can, they, like I said, they've got to be 65 or six and a half centimeters between their horns and their carapace. So their carapace has to be six and a half centimeters. You do get a tool, which I'll show you how to measure them. Um, but for now, the wind's picked up. I'm gonna go home and uh, cook us up a crayfish or two. Thank goodness I dived the other day. It managed to get one more to top us up. So, let's hit it. All right, so time to do those crayfish. And here are the two that I dived the other day. These are good ones. Okay, they've been in the fridge for two days. Actually, today's the third day and they're still fine. And then, I'm gonna just show you how to measure. This is the one we caught just now. Just going to show you quickly how that measures my crayfish bag and I have a measure on my crayfish bag and what you do is you push it there between those two horns there and that line that's where you measure to so this one makes it if it's below that if that in that carapace ends inside of that you've got to release it but you can see there between the eyes you can actually push it in there you'll feel it's a hard piece and then so this one makes it by quite a while quite a way these are available pretty much in all tackle stores and then that helps when you're diving them to keep them in. What I'm going to make is I'm going to make a soft taco bowl with pan fried crayfish and a pineapple salsa with some avo. I think it's going to be absolutely delicious. Let me get cleaning and quite simple to clean. Best is to have a pair of scissors. You just trim the skin. I like to cut into there and just break it and then when you pull that meat out you just twist and you'll find that, that all that meat comes with it there we have it and then we just open there and take the meat out of the shell basically okay and here we have the tail you just cut down the center of it and you can take out that poop shoot <laughs> for lack of a better name. You gotta get rid of that. And then you're left with a lovely piece of crayfish. And then we're gonna we're just gonna dice it up and then pan fry it. Before you cut it you can also do it like this where you just turn it and turn it and then pull it out and the meat all comes out. And then same thing you can just take your scissors and trim it up the center. These ones are gonna be a bit easier to work with now because they've been in the fridge where that one was fresh, it, it, it stuck to the skin quite, quite a lot, but here you can just, you can basically just peel it out. Just got to get in there first and then it comes out. There you go. You want to do this outside, not in your wife's kitchen, because it splashes and sprays everywhere. 
There we go. And once again, just a soft on the back. Let's grab that quick shit out. And last but not least. Shoot. Pop that out. Okay, so there you have it. Now, these heads make the most amazing bisque ever. So I'm going to stick these into a packet and freeze them. And when I'm ready to make my bisque, I'm going to utilize these heads for that. Because all of that makes a stunning bisque. I'm just going to quickly give these a rinse off under the tap. Just a quick rinse off. My kids are getting excited in the background and they want to keep quiet. They love this. There we go. Just give them a good rinse just to get out any of the, of the intestines or guts that might have stuck to them. And that's it. I'm just going to get uh, some crayon out of my garden. Nice solid bunch of coriander and then uh, some spring onions. Just need two of those beautiful, large, organically grown spring onions. Look at those things. I suppose we can grab a handful of, of dill and some, maybe some parsley. Just a little sprig of parsley. And we're just going to chop that into our bowl. Everything's going to be fresh and fragrant and vibrant and delicious. Okay, herbs. Okay, then we're just going to dice up the pineapple. Quite simple, cut the head off. Cut the tail off. Get the skin off. And all of that is going to go into my uh, organic worm farm. They say you shouldn't give them pineapple, but I've been feeding my pineapple for a while and they doing well. Okay, so we're going to cut this through the center down, cut out the center, core, okay, so there you go, you have delicious crayfish, fresh crayfish meat, chopped pineapple, chopped coriander, dill and parsley, Avo, cucumber, and this is red onion, spring onion, and some garlic. And then I'm just going to grab some lettuce. I'm just going to dice up the crayfish. Equal sizes. I'm going to keep the size equal so it all cooks equally, evenly. If you have big pieces and small pieces, then the, you're going to overdo the, the bigger pe or the smaller pieces while you're trying to get the bigger pieces to cook. Okay, so we've got all of that diced up. Okay, so we're gonna marinate this quickly. Basically, the juice of two Millican organic lemons. These are grown on a farm outside of Stanger in KZN, an organic orchard, in an organic orchard by our mates, uh, the Millicans. They don't use pesticides and all that. And I'm actually just gonna use the juice of one Lemon, which I'll squeeze, all the hooks are up because I've done it with a lemon squeezer. I'm just going to pour that over the crayfish. Okay, and then we're going to use Spanish smoked paprika. Okay, smoked paprika and seafood. So, with prawns, with fish, with crayfish, smoked paprika is such a winner. You can get that at uh, most of your stores. These, this one is in particular is from Woolworths. Then we've got some Himalayan rock salt. Salt in there. And lastly some pepper. You can see the flavors are just simple flavors. Nothing too overboard. And basically that lemon juice, the salt, the paprika is a winner. I'm just going to stir that up. And what happens with the lemon juice? What the lemon juice does is it actually seals the meat. Actually starts to cook it slowly. Excuse me, starts to cook it slowly. 
Gives it a lovely flavour. And now for my other ingenious plan, and this is to keep my wife off my back about messing in her kitchen. I have my little uh, cooking stove. I'm just going to leave that to heat up. Alright, the pan's heated up. I'm just going to use some coconut oil. Get that nice and smoking hot. And then we're going to put in... We don't want to overpower the pan. We don't want to drop the heat too much, so we're just going to put in... Slowly add it. Don't just chuck it all in at once. You drop the temperature and then it doesn't sear it nicely. You don't want to overdo crayfish. No, you can't cook it whole, but you know, the flavor is so much better on these little bits and pieces. It gets a lot more flavorsome and a little a few more charred bits and pieces. It just tastes so much better when you cook, when you chop it and then cook it like this. Okay, first batch is done. Then we have the El Paso soft to tear bowl. Okay, this is actually quite nice for this. We're going to take some lettuce. I'm just going to take that and tear it. Some of that in the bottom of the bowl. And then all the lovely ingredients. It's the onions and the garlic. Spoon of that in there. Cucumber. An avo. Some pineapple. Some pineapple. This is just going to give it that break. That, oh, it's going to be delicious. Looking forward to that. And then we're going to put in some crayfish. Chunks of crayfish on top. Such a nice beach food because it comes in its own little bowl, edible bowl. And then lastly, we're just going to chuck a handful of the coriander and things on there. And if you like mayonnaise, this is quite a cool mayonnaise. This is simple truth. It's a tangy mayonnaise with no preservatives, etc. And you're just going to blob a bit of mayo on the top there. And here we go. And the last thing we need is a lemon wedge on the side. Mmm, dinner is served. Mm -mm -mm. And grab it in your hand and... Mm. <laughs> that was nice. A bit messy, but nice. Mm, that's good, eh? Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man, that is so tasty.